Okay, here we go. Video number seven in the Vetrosoft series on how to use the Z directory. Yes, in this video, you will see me type in a program that will send emails to multiple recipients, will do form processing, will submit it to PGP where you can embed PGP code in it, and I'm going to do this in 13 lines of code. So I'm actually going to type this in. You just watch over my shoulder and we're going to compile and run this and send some mail out, including one to Angela Davis. Here we go. The first thing you do is to have this uh, include standard AFX.h. It's a Microsoft requirement under Visual Studio. The Unix guys, uh, I, we don't have that much time. Our benefactor allows us 15 minutes for these uh, video so we got a lot of ground to cover. We're using the mass mail object so obviously we include the header for it. int main argv argc an error of return variable and we declare a mass mail object instance. We'll call it MMX for mass mail X. And the only function to initialize it is I'm going to define where the I and I file is. I'm going to hard code a path in my C drive using backslashes, two backslashes for the path separator. It's under job letter and the file is called job.ini. It's a regular, it looks like a regular INI file. And then we're going to run it. Voila! And I forgot to include C start Z finish. So every Vetrosoft Z directory program needs that. And I'm going to return zero and make a nice clean correct code. And right before we do everything, we'll just call Z start. There it is. That's the whole program. Let's see if it compiles. I've preset these variables for the uh, Z directory includes and libraries. In my case, uh, since I'm Vetrosoft internal, we use via Z dir. You're going to use Z dir includes, and the libraries that we include are basically all of them because this is a, a very high-level powerful object, all 11, 12 libraries actually. And watch video one for how to configure a Microsoft Visual Studio project for Vetrosoft Z directory. Let's build it and see how my typing went. Nope, got one error. I need that. Alright, we built it. I'm going to run it in the debugger to show you how it works. But first, let me explain a little bit. The object, the mass mail object, it usually is loaded via an INI file. And you can see it's like a standard Microsoft INI file. It takes a recipient list in a file, the form letter that you're going to mail out, and you have a program that, ha that contains the mass mail object. This application, it can be of any variety, MFC GUI, console app, a service, uh, Windows CE embedded software, QT GUI app. Follow the arrows. This is a sequence that the mass mail object uses. For each recipient in the recipient list, an output file is generated. The recipient list data is in data bag format. This is a Vetrosoft way of representing data it's similar to XML. The generated output file goes to a mail transport agent, basically the mail server, which then sends it out to the internet. Yeah, there's a couple steps missing. You can put PHP code in your form letter. It will get processed just like under the CGI web server model. Okay, the 
the program's ready, but first let's take a look at the data files, starting with job.ini. This is the file. Um, and at the very top, you can see that I've set use db to no. And if you set use db to yes, uh, that's going to involve the database section of uh, the Z directory. That's a huge system that we'd have to go into at another time, another video. And the next part of this INI file is the files list. The, we have the recipients file, which is a dot .bag, because they're in data bag formats inside. And the form letter is called cv.txt. I'm going to add an attachment called resume as a Word document. And I'm going to specify the post PHP file that will get the uh, form letter. So cv.txt, after it gets processed by PHP, will go to postphp.txt. The run section here, I've set PHP equals yes, send equals yes. These are fairly self explanatory. You could get more information about all the variables on the, at the website under the support section. We'll uh, take a look at that in a bit. And the letter, I have a subject line, uh, the from line. It's, uh, uh, well, Gorth, uh, and it's a gmail.com address. I'm going to use Gmail to send with. My reply line, my MIME type is text HTML, so I'm going to be using an HTML file. Date format, well, we'll skip that for now. The uh, mail server, smtp.gmail.com, uses port 465 and SSL encryption. So if you're interested in using Gmail for your outbound email, here's the parameters for that. The next item is the list of recipients, which is in file who.bag. You can see the uh, in the job.ini file in the window in the background, the path and the file name. And here's the file. The first recipient is Fred Kubark. The second one is Angela Davis. ARPA keyword is synonymous with email address. Advanced Research Projects Agency. That's old school terminology. And we'll get to these variables uh, in a second here in, in the actual form letter. And here's the second one for Angela Davis. And she's in Santa Cruz. I had to Google to see if she was married, uh, and I found that she, apparently she married a New Yorker named Hilton Braithwaite. And uh, if he's still alive and they're still married, then uh, this our form letter will uh, print "Dear Mrs. Davis." Hopefully, that'll be right. And here's the form letter that we're going to send out. It looks like a an HTML page. And uh, since we're sending an HTML email, this is how you do it. If you notice, this has an embedded PHP section, utilizing some variables. And I'm setting the variables here via environment variables. This looks an awful lot like CGI uh, for uh, web pages. Same basic principle, except we're using the mass mailer object from a C++ program. The only difference is that the paths have dashes instead of spaces separating them. If we go back to uh, if we go back to the list of recipients, we we can see the similarities. And I'll see if I can get this. So, in the case of setting the my f name PHP variable, we follow the path name first, and over here. In the first data bag, under name first, that's this will return the string Fred. Name last will return Kubark, and so on. And we're going to have a, an embedded HTML picture that we're pulling off the website. After that, we have this very interesting little piece of code that will determine what, 
our salutation to print dear mister or dear miss or ms or mrs depending on the sex and the married flag and then we have some straight text at the bottom here I have more PHP code which is uh, we're adding some custom text for Angela Davis or being such an iconic figure I'm gonna print a little apology over here and uh, if you notice I'm echoing my F name that's gonna be a replacement via PHP to print her first name Angela and if it's not her then we're gonna check the location variable and in the case of Fred Kubark it is set for Vetrosoft and it's gonna print this little message do you feel lucky remember that little line because uh, we're gonna check the email that we're gonna send and see if that actually prints so let's go to the program and run it I'm gonna just hit F5 and let it rip These are recipients here, and this. Uh, now let's go to a, a web browser and open up Yahoo. Kubark hit, and here's Fred's Yahoo account. I'm going to press the inbox, and here's our message from Gorth, the programmers, and the subject line is "I need a job." Take a look at the email. Now remember there was an embedded HTML image and the uh, the result is this message contains blocked images. This is lazy HTML. Usually uh, it's a warnings flag to a lot of web browsers, uh, Gmail, Yahoo and others, uh, Bing, that this could be potential spam. Uh, so this is a problem of you know sending email this way. But if I have the picture that I have and there you have it, dear Mr. Kubark. And remember, if the we just sent mail to uh, Fred and Angela using our mass mail object. And remember, this is the lot, the entire program right here.